The Prophet والسلام, was the perfect human being without any doubt. And part of being a human being is that you are pleased, but sometimes you are angered. So it is not true that in order to be a perfect human being that you should not be angry. A person without anger can't be a human being. He's a wimp. Someone attacks your wife or your sister and you don't become angry and say, it's all fine, it's all fine. I'll be patient. No, you're not a real man. There are times that you must become angry. Yet, we all know it's part of Islam that one must suppress his anger. The Prophet ﷺ was approached once by a man and his companion asked him, give me advice. The Prophet said, ﷺ, do not become angry. The man said, okay, give me more. The Prophet said, do not become angry. The man said, okay, give me more. The Prophet kept on repeating, do not become angry, do not become angry, do not become angry. This shows you that anger is something that Islam orders you to suppress. However, anger can be suppressed and you're recommended to suppress it. But in some cases, you have to show your anger. You have to express it. When is it preferred and when it is abhorred? It is abhorred when it's for worldly matters. Someone parks in front of your home and you become angry and furious. I know of this person who, when someone parked in front of his house, he came with a baseball bat smashing all the windows of the car. The guy just parked there for 10 minutes to pray in the masjid and come back not violating your rights. And this is not your right. This is not your God-given right. This is not your parking. This is a public area. It's a road. But some people are mentally challenged. So such rage, when it's for your own safety, for your own self, someone insulted you, someone said, uh, uh, criticized you, and you become angry, and you make a, an issue out of it, this is abhorred in Islam. But when this anger is in the sake or in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, for the sake of Allah, when you see sins being committed, when you see things that go against Allah's commands and the Prophet Sunnah alayhi salam, and you become angry because of that, this is something that is recommended and you're rewarded for it. Now, our role model, alayhi salatu wasalam, was a perfect human being. What were the incidents that were reported to us that he was angry? Because there are so many incidents, one of us would have exploded in rage. Yet the Prophet, sallallahu kept his calm and cool. And he did not react negatively. And this is what is meant by do not become angry, meaning do not do things that you would regret due to your anger. These things are impulsive. You just divorce your wife. Why? Well, Sheikh, I was angry. She said, you're not a man. So I'm not a man. You're divorced. And then five seconds later, what I've done? And he keeps on knocking on scholars' doors. Sheikh, did the divorce take place or not? Can you find us? a loophole here or there. And this is what the Prophet prohibited, والسلام, the consequences of such anger. Not that you do not become angry because you're a human being, you have to. So what are the incidents that the Prophet became angry in alayhi salatu wasalam? There are a number of which we must study to learn and acquire knowledge. And whenever we are placed in the same situation, 
we can analyze, hmm, should we become angry like the Prophet was, or should we look the other side and pretend that we did not see anything? So we will mention some and not all because we don't have enough time. For example, the Prophet ﷺ got angry when his companions disputed and argued over things that are beyond dispute and argument, such as, such as the Qur'an. Now we know that the Qur'an was revealed in seven ahruf, whether you, you translate it as dialects, as styles, as whatever, these are the seven ahruf that everybody agrees upon. And the authentic hadiths in the Sahih confirm it. So we embrace that the Quran was revealed in seven ahruf. And we embrace the fact that there are ten recitations, qiraat, which are well known to the scholars. Now, to go into the details, we don't need this. We're believers. We believe that we're created from clay, from mud, from earth, from soil. To go into details and start to analyze and to go back to the labs, and this is not necessary or not needed because we believe. So the Prophet ﷺ once heard the voices of two men disputing over one ayah. The companion said that the Prophet came out of his house with anger visible on his face. And he said to them in a scolding fashion, those before you were destroyed because they differed in their scriptures. Reported by Imam Muslim in the Sahih. So we as Muslims believe that the Quran confirms itself. And if there is something that we cannot understand, we attribute this to our own understanding and that we don't have the ability to understand it. And we go back to the scholars and we say that Allah and the Prophet know best. Not that we start to doubt the Quran or the Ahruf or the preservation of the Ahruf. And if you look nowadays at, at our contemporary times, especially on social media, you find what is called in the Hadith, the silly man, someone without any importance in Islam. You'll find giants who were made to look like midgets and midgets who were inflated to be, look like giants. And they speak left, right, and center about Islam, halal, haram, and about things that are pillars of Islam like the Quran. And they cast doubts in people's minds. Not because they're hypocrites, inshallah they're not, but because they want to flex their muscles. I know you don't know. I have higher degrees. I am an academic. I am this, I am that. And they start spreading doubts among the people about the layman. And then they apologize. Akhi, keep a lid on it. You don't have to do this. You don't have to search in the books of histori uh, historians and of the scholars to get something that people don't know of or have never heard of and exaggerate it and inflate it and show it to the public as if you've found Antarctica or Atlantis or whatever was lost. Antarctica, I think they, they now have it. This is a big problem just to show off and look at me. I know what others don't know. And you confuse the laymen and you confuse the Muslims and you cast doubts and you allow the disbelievers to speak 
ill about the Quran. Do you think if this happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, he would be pleased with it or he would be angered by it? Wallahi, he would be angered by it. Also, the Prophet ﷺ used to sometimes make dua when angry and this is very 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 rare and if I say that it's only three or four incidents in his whole lifetime I wouldn't be exaggerating but when you come to it as a individual incident a separate incident you may read it and say subhanallah how is it possible for example Two men once came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said something to him which made him angry. Mother Aisha said, I did not hear it. And the Prophet was outraged by what they said. So he cursed them and he said bad words to them and they left. Mother Aisha came frightened and terrified, O Prophet of Allah. If there anyone who's a great loser, it's these two men. So the Prophet said, why is that? She said, you cursed them and said bad things to them. Definitely they will be cursed by Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet smiled and said, oh Aisha, didn't you know what I made a condition to my Lord? I said to Allah Azza wa Jal, O oh Allah, I am a human being, meaning that I'm not perfect. So whomever among the Muslims that I may curse or say bad things to, O oh Allah, make my curse to be a form of purification and a great reward to them, which means that this curse is not a curse. Actually, it's dua of mercy and great reward for them. And this is exactly what happened also with Umm Sulaim, the mother of Anas, you know, the servant of the Prophet Anas. His mother's name is Umm Sulaim. Umm Sulaim had a young orphan girl raised in her house. And this orphan once came to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet saw her and he was amazed by how fast she grew. So he said to her, oh you, oh you, you have grown. May Allah stop you from growing. So the girl went terrified to the Prophet ﷺ crying saying, the Prophet made dua that I may not grow. I will not grow. The young girl was frightened. She had all the right to be frightened. So Umm Sulaim rushed to the Prophet ﷺ and said to her, O Prophet of Allah, you made dua against my orphan girl. And he said, what is that, Umm Sulaim? So Umm Sulaim said, she claims that you said that me you never grow up and that you, never, you stay as you are. So the Prophet laughed, alayhi salatu wasalam, and said, Um Sulaim, don't you know I had a condition with my Lord that I am a human being. I am happy and pleased like anyone else is happy and pleased. And I also get angry like anyone else get angry as a human being. So, O oh Allah, whomever I make dua against from my ummah, that he is not worthy of it. O oh Allah, make it a purification and a, 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 a cleansing and a good deed that he would get closer by it from you on the Day of Judgment. So this clearly indicates that the Prophet ﷺ acknowledged his human nature but due to that he was the mercy sent to mankind, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal to add more to that mercy 
by even when he curses those who are not worthy of being cursed or say bad things to them, that Allah switches it and flips it to be something positive for their sake and for their own goodness. And this is, as I said, only two or three and maybe four incidents that are known throughout all of his life that he had cursed those who are not worthy of being cursed. Of course, transforming it into mercy and cleansing and purification does not fall for those who deserve it, like those who deal in riba, like those who fornicate, like those who uh, uh, deal in bribery and, and steal people's money. No, when the Prophet Hassan curses them, they're cursed for what they had done. What other incidents the Prophet got angry in alayhi salatu wasalam? Abu Mas'ud al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, said, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi and explained himself. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, when the Fajr prayer is established, I tend to delay it. So the Iqama is called, I tend to come a little bit slow and waste some time because the Imam prolongs the Salat too much. Yani the guy is like praying for 25 minutes, half an hour, and that is a lot. And we can't take this because it's too long. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Abu Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, says, I've never seen him angry more than that incident. He was outraged. And he said, O oh people, among you, there are those who are specialized in making people repel from Islam. There are those among you, when they speak, they make you hate Islam. And this is a serious offense. Be careful. You and I could be one of those. When we give da'wah, are we mindful of the impact of what we're saying and doing? I'm talking about the majority, not about a single specific ignorant imbecile who know even if you read a, an ayah of the Quran, he would be repelled by it. No, this guy is trash. We don't care about him. I'm talking about the impact of your da'wah, of your actions, of what you say on the majority of the people. Are they benefiting? Go ahead. Keep up. Keep it up. Are they repelled because you're selecting things that people don't know and highlighting it and they say, Islam can't be like this. I'm reserved. No, you caused this. So the Prophet was angry. And he said, among you, there are those who make people repel from Islam. When you lead others, make it short and concise. Because behind you, there might be praying the weak, the elderly, those who have errands they want to go and fulfill. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he was attacked for his his own self, he would probably forgive. But when the attack was towards Sharia, ah, towards religion, Quran or Sunnah, this is not a time to be diplomatic and play it cool. No, you have to show your resentment to what is being said as a form of defense of Islam. You, this is not a place to be diplomatic. They're attacking Islam, insulting the Prophet ﷺ, insulting the religion, and you're saying, yeah, I'm, it's an issue of dispute. I know where you're coming from. No, you don't. You have to show your anger if you're a true Muslim. And the hell with everybody else. Who cares? So once the Prophet was distributing, والسلام, the booties of war and giving to the Muslims, but he is the messenger of Allah. So he knows that some certain certain people, segments of people, deserve more, like, for example, the dignitaries of Quraysh, who just accepted Islam. They were enemies of Islam. But because they were dignitaries of Quraysh, the Prophet gave them 100 camels each so that they would love Islam and get stronger in Islam, and those behind them would follow them. 
while the Ansar, the close beloved companions of Medina, the Prophet did not give them anything. So some of the hypocrites thought that this was unfair, not knowing the wisdom behind it. So they wanted to question the Prophet ﷺ. One of them even went further by objecting and said, this is a division Allah's face was not sought after. Now, who are you accusing? The divider. Who's the divider? The Prophet of Allah. Are you saying that the Prophet's division is not fair and he is not seeking Allah's face by it? This is blasphemous. So the Prophet ﷺ got outraged when he was told of this statement. But then he calmed down and he said, May Allah have mercy on my brother Musa, peace be upon him. He was abused, insulted, and harmed with things that were far greater than this, yet he was tolerant and patient. So it shows you that the anger of the Prophet ﷺ is not for himself. Rather, it's for the religion. Also, the Prophet ﷺ once came to the masjid. And on the wall of the masjid, he saw a sputum. You know, when someone collects from his chest and from his throat and spits it out, it's visible and it's you know, repulsive. So the Prophet saw this and he was angry and his face became red and this was a sign of his anger. Whenever the Prophet got angry, his face would become red and he would never avenge for his own self, never. It would only be for the religion of Allah and this is an insult to the religion of Allah. When you spit it in the direction of the Qibla, when you're praying in the wall of the masjid, the masjid is supposed to be purified and cleaned. So he was angered by it. By it. A woman from the Ansar saw his anger, went straight to it, rubbed it out, scratched it out until it was removed from the wall, and then brought perfume and placed it on its spot. So now the wall has been perfumed of the masjid. And the Prophet said, والسلام, how good this is. That's a very good thing she did. Praising it and showing the Muslims when to be angry, when the masjid is being made filthy, dirty, disrespected, and when to be happy and pleased, when it's perfumed, it's cleaned, it's been taken care of. A three quick incidents because our time is up and we don't want to hold the callers from their questions. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As came to the Prophet ﷺ with two garments, dyed in saffron. And the Prophet had pro prohibited the Muslims from wearing clothes dyed in saffron, not yellow. Yellow is a color, but saffron is a herb. And dyeing your clothes with it which gives it a scent, it gives it a color, is imitating the disbelievers and the idol worshippers. So the Prophet prohibited this. Abdullah ibn Amr came to the Prophet wearing it. The Prophet was outraged. And you can see it in his face. And he said to him, did your mother order you to do this? You're saying this to a grown-up man. So he knew that the Prophet was scolding him. So he said, oh, Prophet of Allah, should I wash them? and remove the saffron from them. The Prophet said, no, burn them. And this is his punishment for defying the Prophet's instructions, In another incident, the Prophet saw one of his companions wearing a golden ring. And everyone knows that it's prohibited for men to wear anything that has gold in it, whether it's a ring, cufflinks, a watch, a pen, a, a chain holder or a key holder. So the Prophet 
got angry, and you can see it in his face, went straight to the man, snatched the ring from his finger, and tossed it away. And he said, why would any one of you take a fire of stone and place it in his hand? And finally, the prophet was outraged when Bilal came to him once and said, O Prophet of Allah, I had a heated argument with Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, one of the great companions and the first to migrate. And in the heated argument, he was so angry, he said to me, you are a son of a black woman. So he is insulting him that his mother is black. And this is racists. In Islam, we, we don't tolerate any such racism. So he went and complained to the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet was angry. And he summoned Abu Dhar. And when Abu Dhar came, and he said to him, you are a man of ignorance, of pre-Islamic era, for saying this to this companion of mine. Do you say to him and insult him by the color of his mother? Abu Dhar came back to his senses, went to, uh, to Bilal, placed his cheek on the sand and said to him, O oh, son of the black woman, place your foot on my other cheek while he was on the ground as a sign of humility that you're placing your foot on my face. And uh, Bilal said, my brother, stand up. May Allah forgive you. These are some of the incidents where the Prophet ﷺ expressed and portrayed his anger, not for himself, rather for the religion of Allah. In the defense of Allah, governed and controlled by the Sharia of Allah. Because I don't want people to come and say, okay, I want to become angry like the Prophet ﷺ for the sake of Allah, in the cause of Allah. Let's burn a house. Let's break a, a, a property. Let's turn, uh, uh, let's attack the authorities. No, this is not what the, the Prophet did, ﷺ. This is not what Islam promotes or endorses. Being angry is controlled by Sharia ah and not by the calls of hooligans and thugs like we find in some Muslim countries, all of a sudden demonstrations and uh, 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 protests and burning of, of property and destruction. This is not part of Islam and this is definitely not part of the Sunnah of the Prophet Alihi